Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Jill and I'm happy to share some reflections and practice with you tonight. Thanks for folks that are here on the Zoom call. It's always so sweet to see you all. And um, for anyone that's practicing with us after the fact on YouTube, we welcome you um, very wholeheartedly. I um, have a beautiful short video on my phone. I wish I had the easy technology to get it on my computer and screen share it with you, but it's a sweet little video just taken right here from this seat in, and there's a window behind my computer screen here. Uh, I guess it was just last week, maybe. We had massive icicles like for the last month or so um, from this window in particular and there were just huge um, and then the temperatures started to change and some warmth and some rain and uh, it was so beautiful watching the icicles melt <laughs> And if you have the opportunity, it's a beautiful practice to just sit and watch ice melt. Drip by drip by drip, slowly. I'm watching one right now, that's why. <laughs> okay, don't get lost. Um, you could even put an ice cube in a dish and just watch it melt as a practice. If you're a visual, if you find visual practice helpful, it's like a snow globe or, but slower. And uh, yeah, so this, this was reminding me of the beauty of patience and then last night in my, um, death doula course that I'm undertaking in the Life and Death Academy. Uh, our teacher, Carrie Sawatsky, offered this as our homework for the week, one of our pieces of homework, um, as a reflection and a practice. See how this lands with you, that it's not urgent. Just that phrase. To practice with that through every day, it's not urgent. Or is it urgent? In particular, in reference to being a death doula, we might even get a call from somebody whose death has recently occurred. And there's this energy, this feeling, particularly amongst loved ones, that there's some urgency to this and, and we have to do something. This is something that's picked up a lot from our culture, that we have to do something and this is urgent. And to um, even though we want to attend to that feeling with folks, it's actually not urgent. It's very, um, there's lots of time. And if we can just take that pause to respond, we're going to be much more skillful than if we go, oh my goodness. And we also get hyped up and charge in. And so this doesn't need to be just referring to life and death, but actually life in general. What's happening in our daily lives where we get into this adrenal adrenalized state of feeling an urgency. Um, and I think a lot of us may be under the influence of that. So just before I go a little further into this um, talk, just pause here and uh, feel into your body as I say these words and see if you can feel where you feel it in your body and what the sensation is like. 
So take a moment. You don't have to be in a meditative posture, but just settling, feel into your body. And notice where you feel sensation and what kind of sensation it is. So accomplishment, attainments, busy, urgent, Just let those words fill you and circle around and through. Accomplishment, attainments, busy, urgent. See if you feel any sensations, where they are. And then exhale. And again, feel in your body, where do you feel it and what kind of sensation with these words, clear seeing, peace, patience, compassion, love, clear seeing, Peace, compassion, love. Okay, and then if your eyes were closed, you could gently open your eyes again. If you choose, you can keep them closed as well. <sighs> mm. And uh, so for me, when I feel the difference in those sensations, it feels like an icicle thawing. I feel that upward lifting and tension and neck and shoulders, a bit of leaning forward, hands or biceps a little bit activated, very up the back of the neck. And then clear seeing, patience, compassion, love my shoulders thaw and drop the face the neck and there's a widening softening grounding and uh, I deeply wish we were in dialogue so that I could hear from you what your experience of those were for those on the zoom call maybe we'll share a bit about that afterwards um, and um, maybe it's something different for you there was uh, um, someone else was sharing that for them, uh, some of those words are really good, have a really positive association, like accomplishment and attainment and and busy even, uh, really felt like like there was a positive association with them, right? Uh, and and that they get the reward after they've done the things, accomplished the things, done the things, then they get to feel peace, compassion, love, calm, clear seeing. And um, as they were relating this to me, uh, I was just in their body language noticing that even though it's a positive association, well, first of all, it is possible that you can feel those things not on just a reward basis. <laughs> you don't have to just be a good person accomplishing the things in the to-do list to allow yourself to feel and cultivate calm and peace, et cetera. So there's that possibility. But also, just as they were sharing, their body language was really like, like this, up and forward and busy and contracted, activated, and then as they were describing, and then I get to relax and feel peaceful and calm. And then they, you know, settled back and there were width and softening, even though both the sensations were kind of in the chest area. One was like this and the other was soft. So um, something to explore your relationship around around these things. And um, 
So the, the reflections tonight are from a book that I've linked down below, a little booklet that you can read online or download, uh, um, very short teachings from Gil Fronsdale, and um, probably compiled by Dharmats or short talks, I'm, I'm not sure, essays on Buddhist mindfulness practice. Um, so, yeah. 2001. Uh, so these are Gil's, um, some of Gil's teachings on patience that I'm uh, sharing tonight. And <clears throat> Gil points out in particular three aspects of patience, three particular qualities of patience. And I'll just list them first, and then we'll talk a bit more about them. So the first one is perseverance. The second is patience under insult. <laughs> That's a hard one. And the third one is the acceptance of truth. So the first one, perseverance. This is a maybe a different quality of perseverance than we think of in our kind of a type A personality culture of perseverance, which is like a fist pushing forward and gritting their teeth. This perseverance is gentle and steady. Like the way a soft tide, not even a big wave can erode rock. Not even a big waterfall, but just gentle waves. And uh, so it's gentle and steady perseverance. Um, and this particularly, so it may show up in our meditation practice. I hope it shows up for you in your meditation practice. It can really be... Uh, Profound support, particularly when we meet the hindrances, the difficulties in practice. When we get bored, when we get restless, when there's other things to do, uh, when there's tension or anxiety, all the ever things <laughs> that make it that are unpleasant. This is when cultivating this quality of patience, gentle, steady, uh, can help us ride that wave, that wave coming and going. And it relates to what we were talking about last week in terms of the sensations that are happening with thoughts. And it's actually the sensations in the body that make us want to get up and abandon our practice. Um, the thoughts are what we notice, but there's, it's actually underneath that I suspect. Check it out for yourself. Strong sensations happening. Uh, similarly, it can be mm, that patience supports us through our practice, also through pleasant times. We might think, I don't need patience for that. Bring it on. Uh, but this... Um, Perseverance quality is important even, as Gil says, when our spiritual practice does meet our expectations. So we can kind of understand how perseverance will help us when it doesn't meet our expectations. But even when it does, when things are going well, we may become complacent. We may be, you know, not as uh, curious, not as diligent, not as um, steady, and, and uh, to be able to maintain our steady dedication to our practice. Um, so you, you, you may hear in this quality, the, the, the quality of equanimity with the vicissitudes or the waves of life, pleasant and unpleasant, coming and going, and this quality of steady, gentle perseverance. The second aspect that Gil teaches here is patience under insult. 
this is where the pause comes in, sacred pause. And I um, was saying earlier, it's amazing that it really only takes a moment to, you know, we might have a moment where we say, oh, I need more than a moment. <laughs> but that initial moment is enough very often that we can feel like, oh, I'm I'm, I might blow here. <laughs> mm, uh, people were sharing some reflections of, you know, and then they ha they have to work through all this guilt and remorse of when they when they let off the steam uh, unskillfully and and all that has to be worked through with that. Um, yeah, just tonight before dinner I was feeling impatience and frustration and I could you know feel the tension and hear the irritation in my voice and you know just pausing stopping being quiet just be quiet <laughs> just be quiet and wait until there's some kind of attention Oh, this feels frustrating. You don't like it. What do you need? Paying attention, listening to those sensations rather than letting them off. Then there's the opportunity to say, this is what's happening. This is what I need. This is how that feels or whatever it is. And uh, everyone is safer and happier. <laughs> So not succumbing to anger, to aggression, um, or despair when we turn anger and aggression at ourselves, um, even when our, we're threatened, being mindful of our reactions. And uh, the pause allows us a chance, could allow us a chance to check in with our intentions, our ethics, our our morality of how we want to be in the world. I don't want to be causing harm to myself and others. Pausing gives us a chance. How do I want to be? You know, and, and that should be really familiar to us. We, we know already how we want to be, what are our values, what are our ethics, and then just a pause to check in and respond from that place. The Buddha teaches, uh, shares in the Samyutta Nikaya, this is from the Brahmana Samyutta um, teaching about insults. And um, in this story, there's an angry man who has insulted the Buddha and so the Buddha simply asks the man if if people ever visit him in his home. And uh, surprised at the change, sudden change of topic, the man answers yes. The Buddha then asked if he ever offered to feed his guests. When the man replied again yes, the Buddha asked, well, what would happen if they refused to accept the food? Who would the food belong to then? So if you're offering the food and somebody's not accepting the food, who does the food belong to? And the man said, of course, it would still belong to, to me. Um, the Buddha then calmly and uh, perhaps kindly said, um, in the same way, I do not accept your insults. They remain with you. You don't need to accept the gift. It is not a gift. Though so the last one, probably the most important one, I would say, is uh, what Gill is calling the acceptance of truth. And this means the, the patience that comes from insight, 
from truly seeing the nature of things. Of course, that all things are impermanent and conditioned, conditioned most very, very often beyond our control. Believe me, I don't like it either, but it's the truth. <laughs> and so really, uh, like what, what things make us impatient, bring impatience? You know, being on hold for an hour uh, or more, <laughs> uh, waiting in line, uh, traffic jams, uh, other people not doing what you want, when you want, how you want it. Um, a lot of impatience with ourselves. I should be this. Why am I not? impatience with our bodies? Why is my body like this? And most often these things are beyond our control at that present moment. This is how it is. And this acceptance of truth that um, I'll just say Gil's words here because perfection. Uh, this includes living in accord with the insight that at our core, there is no self to build up, hang on to, or defend. How much of our impatience comes from a self that wants to protect or to get or to hold on to? And patience comes from the insight of seeing the true nature that this self, there is no separate, permanent, continuous isolated from all other arisings being this seeing the true nature of this self as being conditioned changing not something to be clung to and i love this line he says this requires a kind of patience because punchline here deep spiritual insight insight is an insult to the ego. That's so good. Deep spiritual insight is an insult to the ego. Ego wants to not be abandoned. Ego wants to not die. Ego wants um, to be known and take care of. And um, so, so it it keeps trying so hard to be seen and known and to get and hold on to and get rid of and control everything. When we practice with patience, which is that softening, widening, gentle, steady presence it has the capacity to know when self comes and and it can be attended to what do you need you don't like it what do you want me to know how can we move in alignment with our values in that pause in that space that gentle meeting the self can be taken care of and it doesn't have to act out. It doesn't have to uh, react. We can respond. Yeah. I think that's all. Yes, let's practice patience so that it may be so. And uh, once we settle into the <clears throat> practice, um, um, our posture, I'll start by reading a poem. 
And the poem is called The Patience of Ordinary Things by Pat Schneider, and I'll put the link to it below in our YouTube recording. Okay, so let's just uh, start to get into our posture for practice. See if you can start with the uh, gentleness and steadiness in your posture. So is it helpful to find some width? Uh, do you need to lie down? Uh, do you need, I'm going to put a shawl on for a bit of warmth. <clears throat> Do you want to adjust your lighting or turn away from the screen? Hmm. So see what helps you to come into settling. Do you need any movement or touch or looking around your space? Sometimes sighing breaths are helpful. This is the patience of ordinary things. It's a kind of love, is it not? How the cup holds the tea. How the chair stands sturdy and foursquare. How the floor receives the bottoms of shoes or toes. How soles of feet know where they're supposed to be. I've been thinking about the patience of ordinary things. How clothes wait respectfully in closets. And soap dries quietly in the dish. Towels drink the wet from the skin of the back. And the lovely repetition of stairs. And what is more generous than a window? And I might add to that the, the patience of icicles melting. Do we even feel impatience at the weather? So as we maybe you might have felt with those those beginning words of clear seeing, peace, compassion, love, patience. Inviting a sense of thawing to the body. Feel the patience of your bones. And invite the muscles to thaw and drape and soften. Feel the steady presence of your weightedness. Downward and wide. Soft, heavy. The patience of the earth waiting there to receive you.
Your practice is not urgent. Your practice is patient. The ultimate patience is effortless contentment. What does it feel like in the body in this moment if there's nothing to solve, nowhere to be, and no one to become? And from this wide, soft presence, we'll gently and skillfully invite in some awareness of an impatience that's visited recently. It might be subtle or mundane, or it might be very strong. So, not too feed into the story of it, but just acknowledge. And with gentle, steady attention, offer some listening, some kind attention to that impatience. Are you impatient with yourself, with your body, with systems, with others? And if it fits for you, you just allow some organic phrases to arise. It might be compassion or forgiveness for yourself or others, kindness. May I be gentle and patient with myself or with others. See what words arise for you, or just rest with the felt experience. Practicing patience with impatience. And then we can let that go, perhaps with a deeper breath. And then feel this thawing, softening, widening attention again. It might be helpful to feel into the space of the room, particularly the space behind you.
Just resetting the nervous system, resting, effortless, content. And then we might choose to intentionally, gently bring in this soft reflection with patience under insult. Where we maybe have reacted or have wanted to react with with anger, perhaps, aggression, or turning that onto ourselves. And recalling here, what are your intentions of how you want to be in the world? In this pause, and let your values, your ethics, Shine forward into your awareness. And if it's something you've taken on from somebody or from your own inner voice of harshness, you can remind yourself that you don't need to accept the gift. You don't need to take the food or the gift that's offered, as was taught in that teaching. And then it still belongs to the one who owns it. See if there's any phrases organically arising that feel supportive. May I be gentle, patient with myself or with others. May I forgive myself or others. May I move towards forgiveness, even if that's not possible right now. And we see that patience is actually the absence of habit, the absence of reactivity. And a deeper breath, soften. Any reactivity, widen, feel the space in the room and the space behind and in front of you, rest, rest.
And the third form of patience that Gil is offering here is the acceptance of truth. Unhooking from all that we're trying to control that is maybe beyond our control. The truth of impermanence. Drip by drip, thawing the heart. And can you feel as a sensation in the body, as the poem said, that patience is a kind of love, is it not? And especially now in these next five minutes of practicing silently together, when impatience arises, might show up as boredom or restlessness, sleepiness, desire, aversion, doubt, Recognize the sensation of it. Attend with gentle, steady awareness. And feeling it arise and pass.
May our cultivation of patience be for the highest good and well-being of ourselves and all beings. May all beings be safe from harm. May all beings know true peace and ease with all of the waves of life. should have mentioned at the beginning that patience is not the same as resignation. It doesn't mean that when there's injustice, that when there's, yeah, I'll use that as a catch-all, that we're just, oh well, it's not resignation of um, but it's the patience, the pause, the gentle, steady wisdom responding is different than, um, you know, just like uh, resigning ourselves from engaging in the world. Yeah, just wanted to add that note. All right, folks, so those of you that have joined us for practice here on YouTube, oh, sneeze, mm, I wish us continued cultivation of patience and uh, hope to practice with you again sometime. All right, I remember <laughs> last time I... Uh, I exited from the whole meeting. That was so funny. <laughs> All right.